good morning students myself vijay shankar from ec department civil engineering college so today i'm going to discuss about the inverse jet transform examples the last class for the last chapter in our syllabus so we already discussed about the inverse jet transformation by using the four methods so one method is power series method or the long division method and second method is partial fraction expansion method and third method is a residue or counter integration method and the last one is by using the convolution property how to find out the given x of z function in the time domain function x of n in the last topic here linear time invariant system linear time invariant system so the x of n the discrete time signal discrete time signal is given to the system that system is a linear time invariant system h of n to get the response is a y of n the response is nothing but the output the input is a discrete time signal it passes through the linear time invariant system the linear and also the time invariant for the linear time discrete time system will be represented by the difference equation remember my dear students by the difference equation what is the difference equation sum of k equal to 0 to n is a finite duration here a suffix k y of n minus k and that is equal to sum of k equal to 0 to m here the capital m my dear students b suffix k x of n minus k so difference equation x is nothing but the input value and y is the output function so here the input function is x here we represented the x is x of n minus k that k value having the zero we can substitute we'll get the x of n and one we can substitute x of n minus 1 and so on means it is depends upon the present and the past inputs this is the past input okay and similarly here in the left hand side you can observe you can substitute k is equal to 0 it becomes of a y of n and y of n minus 1 This is y of n is a present output. Y of n minus one is a past output. See, in the input and output, it is not at all depends upon the feature inputs and the feature outputs. Only it is depends upon the present and the past inputs, present output and the past outputs. Okay. And now we know the z transformation. X of n, the z transform is x of z. and here there is a transform of uh, the shifting function time shift function the time shift function we have x of n minus k is x of z whatever the samples we are shifted towards the right side can take as a negative power of z z power minus k if x of n plus k is there we can get it is a z power minus k is becomes of plus k it matters friends now use the sum of k equal to 0 to n a sub x k z power minus k y of z on apply the z transformation on both sides of this equation the sum of k equal to 0 to n a of k and what is the shifting operation we are applying here z power minus k y of z and z power minus k x of z in the right hand side So y of z by x of z is a transfer function of the system function, transfer function or system function we are calling it as. That is equal to sum of uh, k equal to zero to m, zero to m b suffix k z power minus k up to this, and here also divided by sum of k equal to zero to n a sub x k z power minus k. When I am taking the y of z by the x of z cross multiplying, 
call it as system transfer function or system function h of z is equal to h of z is equal to sum of k equal to 0 to m b sub x k z power minus k whole divided by sum of k equal to 0 to n a sub x k z power minus k. Got it, my dear student. System transfer function or it is a system function. Transfer function means output by the input. Got it, my dear students. Then, indicating that the impulse response or the impulse response of the transfer function, impulse response means uh, the y of n is the y that is uh, delta of n or the h of n we are calling it as the impulse response. Impulse signal is the delta of n. Impulse response is the h of n. After applying the Z transformation of this impulse response, we are getting the H of Z, nothing but the system transfer function. Okay. Delta of N. Delta of N is given to the system. Linear time invariant system. The response is impulse response, nothing but the H of N. For the impulse signal passes through the system, we'll get the impulse response. And this impulse response, uh, whatever we got, uh, apply the Z transformation, we'll get the H of Z, calling it as uh, Y of Z by the H of Z is a system transfer function or system function. What it matters to us? So given function the y of n minus 3 y of n minus n is equal to x of n x of n it's a linear time invariant uh, system of the differential function apply this the transformation on both sides for the given function y of n is nothing but y of z here minus 3 y of n minus 1 z power minus 1 y of z that is equal to x of n this is the transformation is x of z Take the y of z is a common here. y of z into 1 minus 3 z inverse x of z. So y of z by x of z is equal to 1 by 1 minus 3 z inverse. Or you can also return as a z by z minus uh, 3. z by z minus 3. According to that, it is a z by z minus a. The a power n mu of n. What is the z transformation here? A power n mu of n, the transformation is uh, 1. In the positive powers of z is z by z minus a. In the negative powers of z is a 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. Okay. Now here the positive powers of z instead of a, 3 value is there. So what is the h of n is equal to 3 power n mu of n. Impulse response. Calculate the system impulse response. Uh, system impulse response or it is a transfer function the given function it is uh, y of n minus 3 y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n h of n is equal to we got the impulse response similarly take the second example you can see here y of n plus 0.5 y of n minus 1 plus 2 into y of n minus 2 plus 3 into y of n minus 3 plus 0.5 y of n minus 1 is equal to 3 into x of n plus 5 into x of uh, n minus 2. Apply this a transform on both sides. What is the y of n? The transformation is y of z plus y of n minus 1 is the transformation is z power minus 1 into y of z already taken into the comma. And for this third term, y of uh, n minus 2 z transformation is z power minus 2 y of z and fourth term y of n minus 3 z transformation is z power minus 3 y of z and the last term here it is a fifth term y of n minus 4 z transformation is z power minus 4 y of z is equal to two terms in the input function x of n z transformation is x of z x of n minus 2 the transformation is 
z power minus 2x of z. On both sides, we can take here the y of z is a common and the x of z is a common. Write as the output by the input y of z by the x of z. 3 plus 5 into z power minus 2 and denominator 1 plus 0.5 z power minus 1 that's 2 into z power minus 2 and 3 into z power minus 3 and 0.8 into z power minus 4 nothing but is a x of z calling it as a system function or the system transfer function output by the input got it my dear students now you can find out the factors here you can find out the factors in the denominator and by using the partial fraction method or residue method whatever the method you can use uh, to find the impulse response of the h of z impulse response of the h of z what it matters friends so today you'll get the four five four factors here the four poles or convert first of all convert into the positive powers of the z then after you can find out the, the poles to get the impulse response over h of n impulse response h of n got it my students and another example also we have here y of n is equal to y of n minus one plus or the y of n is equal to y of n minus y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2 plus x of n minus 1. It is is equal to only my students. This is z equal to. Apply the z transformation on both sides. y of z is z equal to z inverse y of z, z power minus 2 y of z plus z inverse x of z. Take the two terms in the left hand side. 1 minus z inverse minus z power minus 2. Take the y of z as a common. Write the y of z by the x of z and convert into the negative powers to the positive powers. The z by z minus uh, 1 by 2 whole square minus 3 by 4. Okay. Z by z minus. It is in the form of a cos. Not the cos. Okay. Cos only. z by z minus a whole square minus uh, b here using that uh, any one of the function we have we can multiply that uh, a power n v of n it is now it is a k power n into cos function also we'll get when whenever you can find out the h of z in the impulse response but here we are finding only the system function only for the second example and the third example we are finding out the uh, only the system function. If we want the impulse response also by using the partial fraction method or any one of the method, use that and find out the impulse response. And here it is a direct function only. z by z square minus z minus 1. It is in the form of z by z minus a whole square minus b. It's a constant here. To get it here, the constant uh, h of z by z is equal to x of z by z like that okay and the next example fourth example also the y of n is equal to or the y of n is equal to y of n minus uh, it is not the function there is no anything here y of n minus 2 minus 3 into y of n minus 1 plus 2 into y of n is equal to x of n minus 1 apply this a transformation for this y of n minus 2, y of n minus 2 is uh, y of z into z power minus 2 minus 3 into y of n minus with z transformation is z power minus 1 y of z and uh, 2 into y of z that is equal to x of n minus 1 z transformation is z power minus 1 x of z. So take the y of z as a common in the three terms y of z by z x of z is equal to z inverse and the 2 minus 3 z inverse plus z power minus 2. Convert into the positive powers z by 2 z square minus 3 z plus 1. Write the factors in the denominator 
two z minus one and z minus one. Using the partial fraction expansion method, you can get the a is minus two and b is one. And impulse response of the h of z, h of n is equal to it is in the form of z by z minus v a. What is the a here? One by two. So minus one by two whole power n v of n. And z by z minus one, one power n v of n. So without giving any ROC, you can write it is always in the right hand side only, my dear students. Here, why we are writing it's a mu of e n without having any ROC is a greater than or it is a less than or in between. If they mention, you can find write down whether it is in the right hand side or the left hand side or in between. If they not mention directly, they are asking to find the impulse response without asking any ROC or given in the ROC. Default you can use in the right hand side only. Minus one by two whole power n mu of n, and the z by z minus one is one power n mu of n. Got it, my students. Next, calculate the x of n for x of z is equal to z by two z square minus three z plus one, and magnitude of z is less than one by two pi. Power series method, partial fraction method, residue method, and the convolution method. So they are they are asking that it is a given x of a, x of z is given so using all the types of uh, all the types of uh, inverse the transformation. You can find the x of n value for the given x of z. So what is the x of z? Is z by two z square minus three z plus one. Z is less than one by two. So less than means uh, represent the numerator and the denominator or in the descending powers. The descending powers. So take here z power minus one, z power minus two minus three z inverse plus two. So when we are converting it to the positive powers, uh, when we are going for the partial fraction method, but the Power series method, you have to keep that in the negative powers of z only. So z inverse, you can divide with the z power minus 2 minus 3 z inverse plus 2. In the descending order, the z power minus 2 and z power minus 1 is there. You can take here the z and go on, goes on to find the value z plus 3 z square plus uh, 7 z cube and 21 z power 4 and 63 z power 5 will get okay take that coefficient value z plus 3 z square plus 7 z cube 21 z power 4 and 63 z power 5 and uh, so on z power minus n multiplication is for x of n and z power n is multiplicand is for the x of uh, minus n here it is a positive power so we will get uh, so x of minus one what is the coefficient here this is a z power one means definitely it is multiplied with the x of minus coefficients x of minus coefficients for the positive powers of z so x of minus one is a one and z power two what is the coefficient here x of minus two so x of minus two is a three x of minus three is a seven x of minus four is twenty one x of minus 5 is a 63 and x of minus 6 is a 189 and so on. So we got the values is x of minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. All you can write from mine. So on 189, 63, 21, 7, 3, 1 and the 0 because there is no any value at n is equal to 0. It's not at n is equal to 1. Okay. The x of n having the sequences having the sequence the value is 189 so on the 189 63 21 7 3 1 because x of minus 1 is a 3 minus 2 is a 3 x of minus 1 is a 1 minus 2 is 3 minus 3 is 7 minus 4 is 21 minus 5 is 63 and minus 6 is a 189 so using the power series sir. So first of all you can see that if it is a less than means sir. less than means left hand side of all the values in the left hand side. Because of that, you can write it as a descending order. 
If suppose it is a greater than means uh, you can reverse. Uh, check that it is a two plus two minus three z inverse and the z power minus two is divided with the z inverse. So reverse order. The ascending order we can take, uh, and we'll get in the negative powers. Negative powers of z and take the coefficients is from the zero to infinity. And coming to the second one, partial fraction expansion method. X of z is equal to z by 2z square minus 3z plus 1. So definitely for, by using the partial fraction expansion method, you have to convert the given function to the positive powers. Already the given function is a positive power. So. And find the roots in the denominator. What are the roots by using this formula minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. We got the 1 and the 1 by 2. So z minus 1 and 2z minus 1. So 1 by 2 means uh, that is a z minus 1 by 2 only. Okay, my dear students. Or otherwise, you can see that z minus 1 and 2z minus 1, the function, you can multiply these two. 2z square minus 2z and minus z is a minus 3z and minus into minus is a plus 1. It satisfies the condition. So x of z by z is equal to z1 by z minus 1, 2z minus 1. Okay, 2z minus 1. Find the a and the b values uh, by using the partial fraction expansion and cross multiply the z, z by z minus 1 minus 2z by 2z minus 1. And in this, uh, we can take the common of the 2 here, 2 to get cancelled, z minus 1 by 2. z minus 1 by 2. Now it is in the form of uh, z by z minus 1. Another one is uh, z by z minus 1 by 2. Because they are asking it is a left hand side, left hand side, ROC. Now you can write the z by z minus 1, the first function, z by z minus 1 in the left hand side. That is minus 1 power n mu of minus n minus 1. And here, Already in the term having the minus is there, but applying the inverse the transformation, z by z minus a is a minus of a plus one by two whole power n mu of minus n minus one. Since it is a ROC is a less than one by two. Don't see that the value here. Less than means definitely the two terms you can write in the left hand side. Greater than means all the terms you can write in the right hand side. When we can see the value here. Whenever if it is in the in-between, in-between there is any value means uh, 1, we can see which is greater than or less than, 1 by 2, if it is a greater than or less than, you can write that according to that values. Okay, so we completed the power, so power series method and the partial fraction method for the given x object and residue theorem and the convolution. Third method, so it is by using the residue theorem. We know the formula, the residue theorem formula. If you're having any factors, is there that is a zi is equal to one and uh, one by two, only the one time it repeats, one time only. We have one by k minus one. The formula is a one by k minus one factorial to power k minus one by dou z of dou z k power minus 1 and z minus z i z minus z i whole power k x of z and z power n minus 1 at z is equal to z i what it matters this is a residue method you have to find out to find for any given function. So first of all, I'm taking the zi is equal to one. So zi is equal to one. What is a k there? Zi is equal to one. What is a k? It's only the one time. Okay, one by one minus one factor, zero factor is a one. Two power is also only the one time you have to get the minus one. 
So if you are not taking direct, it will directly it is a k is equal to one time. In this substitute, you can value it becomes of a k minus one is z minus one x of z and z power minus n minus one z one that is equal to one. And similarly, here also the one time only you can apply here the dou by dou z of uh, only the one time dou by dou z of uh, z minus z i that is a z minus one whole power k is equal to one. You can take the k is equal to one x of z that is a z by z minus one into z minus one by two and z power n minus one to one because the value is a one only here. Okay. Only if f it is a one time, we can take it is a derivative is a one time only. Got it, my dear students. If k is equal to one, no need of taking that is a k minus one is a zero. Don't think it is a dou power zero and dou power z is. A, and you can apply that is a dou power z and the dou power zero. The so value is one only. And z minus one and the z power z minus one you get cancelled. And z by z minus uh, one by two. And z power n into z power minus one at z is equal to one. Okay. See what is the z power plus one and z power minus one? It becomes of the one value. Z power n by the z minus one at z is equal to one. Don't apply here the z derivative because it's a dou power zero by dou power z power zero. No need to apply the derivative here. Directly you can substitute z is equal to one in this function, one power n, whole divided by z minus one by two, z minus one by two, the one minus one by two, the value is a one. So we got the one power n only for the first function, one power n. Second function, second function is c. The same thing, dou power zero by dou power z, because it is a k value is a one, but z is equal to z i is equal to one by two. Z i is equal to one by two. So second function, it is a dou power zero by dou z power zero, and the one by zero factorial is a value is a one. Now it is a z minus one by two whole power one z by z minus one and z minus one by two z power n minus one at z is equal to one by two. So z power one by two, z power one by two get cancelled. No need to apply the derivative here because it is a dou power zero by dou z power zero and z by z minus one into z power n minus z. So here also the power one and minus one is get cancelled z power n by z minus 1 a to z is equal to 1 by 2 i can substitute the 1 by 2 here plus 1 by 2 whole power n and 1 by 2 minus 1 it becomes of minus 1 so these are the two factors we got but the given it is in the left hand side so left hand side means the value it becomes of a minus 1 whole power n v of uh, minus n minus 1. Already we have here the minus is there. Now minus n minus is the plus becomes 1 by 2 whole power n v of uh, minus n minus 1. Okay. This is a final answer by using the residue method. You see here x of n is equal to x of n is equal to minus mu of minus n minus 1. There is no any value of 1 power anything is a value is 1 only. And second term plus 1 by 2 whole power n mu of minus n minus 1. What it matters to this? <coughs> so using this formula 1 by k minus 1 factorial dou power k minus 1 dou z k minus 1 z minus z i whole power k x of z, z power n minus 1, where the z is equal to z i. Using this formula, you have to find out the
by using the residue method for the given function x of uh, z in terms of uh, x of n. Okay. And the next one, the last method, fourth method, the convolution method. Given function is z by 2z square minus 3z plus 1. So z by z minus 1, 2z minus 1. Take the two functions as of x of z is equal to the first one z by z minus 1 is x1 of z and uh, 1 by 2z minus 1. Otherwise, 1 by 2 into 1 by z minus 1 by 2 as x2 of z. Okay. Apply the inverse z transformation because uh, z is less than 1 by 2. You can write as minus of 1 whole power n v of minus n minus 1. x2 of n is minus of uh, 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1. Why it is n minus 1? I already told uh, a power n v of n. Z transformation is uh, z by z minus e. z by z minus e in the positive power subset. Similarly, for a power n minus 1, mu of n minus 1, the z transformation is 1 by z minus v. Remember this. 1 minus 1 by z minus e. a power n minus 1, mu of n minus 1, shifting one sample towards the right side. Okay. So it is in the form of 1 by z minus e. So 1 by 2 already there, it is a constant coefficient, simply you can say 1 by 2. So for the, by using this formula, x2 of n is equal to, x2 of n is equal to, already the 1 by 2 is there, because of it is a less than term, I am taking the minus 1 by 2 whole power n, n minus 1, not the n, n minus 1, mu of n minus 1 minus 1 minus of okay minus of n minus 1 minus 1 so simplify this minus 1 by 2 here the 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1 already the one term is a 1 by 2 here so minus of 1 by 2 whole power 1 and 1 by 2 whole power 1 it becomes of 1 by 2 whole power n only and mu of uh, minus of n minus 1 means uh, it is becomes of minus n minus plus 1 and minus 1. So that is equal to minus 1 by 2 whole power n. Mu of uh, minus n only. 1 and get cancelled. What it matters, students? Here they wrote only for the z1 by z minus a. There is not taking that it is a 1 by 2 here. For that case we got a 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1. Okay. I simplified that is a 1 by 2 in total term the minus of a 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1 here the plus 1 is there and minus 1 get cancelled. So 1 by 2 is already there here that is equal to and 1 by 2. Got it my students. Okay, using only the 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1, mu of minus n. Then, apply the convolution, x1 of n with the convolute of x2 of n. The formula is the sum of k equal to 0 to n. k equal to the 0 to n, x1 of k, x1 of k, and the x2 of n minus k. So, the first function you can observe here, I substitute the k, n value as a k value minus 1 power k mu of minus k minus 1. And the second term you can observe here, x2 of n minus k, wherever the n is there, you can substitute by n minus k, minus of 1 by 2 whole power, n is now n minus k minus 1. And here, mu of minus of n minus k, because n is n minus k, mu of minus of n minus k. Got it. The sum of uh, k equal to 0 to n, k equal to 0 to n, mu of uh, 
one power anything in the value is a one only minus students. And here the minus is there, and here the minus minus into minus is becomes a plus. We have minus k minus one, one by two whole power n minus k minus one, and this becomes of we have minus n plus k. We have minus n plus k value. Got it. So I am taking the mu of uh, mu of minus k minus one is equal to one when minus k minus one is greater than or equal to zero. Why? Now if you can take the mu of k is equal to one, k equal to one, definitely that we can say the k is greater than or equal to zero. What it matters, friends. Similarly, the mu of a function minus n plus k is equal to one when minus n plus k is greater than or equal to zero. What it having here? The k minus k is greater than or equal to minus one, and k is greater than or equal to one. K is greater than or equal to one, and in this function, minus n plus k is greater than or equal to zero. Means minus n is greater than or equal to minus k, and k is less than or equal to n. Means k is greater than or equal to one, and k is less than or equal to n. Means uh, definitely that is the range of uh, one to n only. One to n, and otherwise, uh, if suppose if we can take that value is one to n, now one power two whole power n minus k minus one, n minus one the value is uh, same function here because it is not related to the k, and sum of uh, here they take it is n to infinite. Why it is n to infinite? Uh, they take uh, they took that value is. Uh, n to infinite actually it is a 0 to n 0 to n since it is in the value it becomes of a negative values negative values for all the values of the negative it becomes of a n to infinite from n value the k is less than or equal to n and the k is greater than or equal to 1 so actually it becomes of a One to n. I take that it is for the right hand side. One to n. The right hand side is a one to n. See here. I'll clearly explain that uh, the convolution method is minus infinite to infinite here. Minus infinite to infinite. Not this is a zero to infinite, zero to n minus students. Keep it that is a minus infinite to infinite, and this is also minus infinite to infinite, minus infinite to infinite. Then this minus infinite to infinite now it becomes of by taking the k values as of n to one, n to one, not the one to n. The k is greater than or equal to one, and the k is less than or equal to n. Means the sum of k equal to one to n values in the range of one to n only. One by two whole power n minus k minus one. Since these values are the k values only, so we can take the one by two whole power n minus one is a Constant and sum of k equal to one to n, one by two whole power minus k. Now it is in the form of a one to n. So n one is equal to you know the formula is the sum of a n is equal to n one to n two. A power n is equal to. We have the formula is there. A power n one 
minus uh, a power n2 plus 1 by 1 minus a. Got it, my students. Now the sum of uh, n is equal to k equal to 1 to n, 1 by 2 whole power k. What is the a here? 1 by 2. What is the n1? 1, 1 minus what is a a 1 by 2? What is a n2 n n plus 1 whole divided by 1 minus 1 by 2? Simplify this now. Here the 1 by 2 minus uh, 1 by 2 whole power uh, n and uh, n plus 1 whole divided by 1 by 2 because it is a 1 minus 1 by 2 is a 1 by 2. Already we have 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1. Already we have whole power n by 2 minus 1. What do you find 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1 is multiplied with 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 whole power n plus 1 whole divided by 1 by 2. And already I told here there is a 1 by 2 is there. Since the 1 by 2, we wrote the 1 by z minus a value only. 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1, we of uh, minus of n minus 1 minus 1. So 1 by 2 is multiplied. Here the 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 get cancelled. What divided students? Still you can further simplify that uh, 1 by 2 whole power n and 1 by 2 whole power minus 1 and in these two functions also we can take the common as 1 by 2 1 minus 1 by 2 whole power n and 1 by 2 is get cancelled see in these two functions 1 by 2 I take the common 1 minus uh, and here the n plus 1 is there already we got the 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 whole power minus 1 and the 1 by 2 is a value is a 1 by 2 whole power 0. The value is a 1 only. Now 1 by 2 whole power again and multiply with 1 minus 1 by 2 whole power again. Got it my dear students. Now even you can multiply this 1 by 2 whole power again minus and 1 by 2 whole power n and 1 by 2 whole power n. Where bits are same, we can add the powers. So 1 by 2 whole power n plus n, that is a 2n. It's a value of the function. But my students, so after you can expand this by using the convolution method for the given x of z, z by z, 2z square minus 3z plus 1, the final x of n is equal to 1 by 2 whole power n minus 1 by 2 whole power 2n. Got it, my dear students? Or you can simply use this uh, sum of, uh, it is not the sum of n is equal to infinite, my dear students. It is a value is uh, changes, uh, depends upon the mu of minus k minus 1 and the mu of minus n plus k. Got it? So with this, uh, we complete uh, the set transformation uh, unit also. The third year uh, triple E students, uh, sixth unit is completed. And for the second year uh, ECE students, second year ECE students, uh, fifth unit, the second part, uh, set transformation. Okay, so with this class, uh, totally all the syllabus what we have is completed as per the same 2K. Okay? If you have any doubts, uh, please rise, my dear students. I will clear your all the doubts uh, in first unit to the last unit. So with this uh, online classes of all the units, uh, what we have as per the same to you, five units of uh, 
second year students and the six units for the third year students as per the all 16 syllabus is complete. Okay. Any doubts, my dear students? Okay, thank you and all the best.